The Grozily Vendors Association has been affected severely by the ban on mass crowd events, particularly the popular Grozily Friday night event. The event drew huge crowds from across the country, including tourists from the various hotels in the north. However, due to COVID-19 protocols, vendors have witnessed a stagnation in business activity. Among them is the lack of tourism arrivals, the alcohol legislation and curfew. Overall, some 60 vendors have been impacted by the fallout of the outbreak. Every single vendor has been affected. Even our contributing bar owners have been affected. So everybody whose economic um, activity comes from the Friday night are affected. So the association itself is affected as well. Um, we have, in total, we have a number of 46 beverage vendors, eight food vendors, six craft vendors, and six participating bar owners. The bar owners are persons who contribute towards the Vendors Association. In May, local sports journalist Kenson Kazume launched a virtual Friday night fundraising venture to aid the vendors. This saw local artists, DJs and performers banding together to make the event possible. Robado, baby, tell me what's up. Boom! What you doing with Chuman and Taiwan? The plan for me to Taiwan. Your best friend Do you rather than your mother? Now six feet. See the one another now. Donations were also made via the Cash App and GoFundMe platforms. Kazume managed to raise some $20,000 from the venture. It really, really hurt my heart when I was having a conversation with a young lady who said to me, can you imagine, Grosley Friday Night was perhaps one of the first events that were directly impacted by COVID-19. No more tourists coming to St. Lucia, so it meant that no more activity in the Grosley community every Friday night. I grew up in Grosley, as most of you guys know, and uh, of course, p persons who know me would know my mom is uh, somebody who uh, at some point started making cakes to walk around with a trolley selling to actually ensure that she got that income in addition to being a janitor at the Grosley Catholic Church to make ends meet. So the mere fact that you have somebody so close to you that you know that you can still support and you will support in that time and not being sure about the others in the community really drove me to have this activity for the vendors. People who lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic qualify for income assistance through the NIC Economic Relief Program, but under one condition, displaced workers must have been employed and paying into the NIC as of February 2020. Kazimi explained that the initial thinking was that majority of the vendors were not NIC contributors. It left a question, should we continue to punish them for not being NIC contributors? And I've said this before. And I've said, even this morning in our group chat, I said we definitely have to look at a mechanism for ensuring that every single vendor contributes to NIC every month going forward. And every single person have agreed to that. Even when we had our Zoom meeting, we had a WhatsApp meeting online, everybody saw the need for that and they've agreed going forward that we are definitely going to institute that. The government made mention of seeking some monies from the Taiwanese government for those who were non-paying members. My experience as a civil servant and my experience working with government is that these things take time. It's a process. St. Lucia and the rest of the world is suffering under COVID-19. Taiwan is also suffering. The donation will be shared equally among the vendors. Kazeme plans to host similar events in the future to provide some relief to the vendors. Gina Filippi, HTS News Force.